My name is Amanda fucking Palmer and I am a professional thing doer. My style I would define as, you know, as it's lazy. It's not like I made a deliberate decision when I started a band to be like, I will not be a fashion icon. But I just never cared. I never cared about fashion designers and wearing a different costume for each show. The eyebrows, the eyebrows have a story. When I was in college, I'm having like a typical college mental breakdown. I shaved all my hair, all of it, all my body hair, my head hair, my face hair, my everything, everything, everything. I had no eyebrows, which looked really strange. So I drew them, I squiggled them, I did something creative. Now that it's been 12 years, I'm not sure what they would look like if I grew them back. They might be like, ah! terrifying spikes of doom. She is a part of the music continuum and she is I don't think there is any musical or performance education that can do what street performing does. Learning how to deal with whatever happens to you. It's a totally unsafe stage. And that I think gives you, it, it gives you an incredible sense of confidence and it also gives you a sense of humor and a sense of like, stability and flexibility. But in the street, if people are just expecting their commute to work and then all of a sudden they're confronted with art and, and they have an emotional experience that they weren't expecting at all, to be the artist providing that experience is like it's like gold. You can make pop music, you can paint ducks. But if you're a pop artist and you're a woman, then it's much more likely that people will say your art sucks. Making pop music isn't for everyone. Amanda, at six years old, was just starting to learn how to use the family turntable. And like a typically obsessive kid, I only had one record that I wanted to listen to, and I listened to it over and over and over and over again was Sgt. Pepper's by the Beatles. And that was the soundtrack of my life for a long time until I started buying my own records. In college, I was really isolated. And I had two things that I think of. One was the music that I brought with me from high school that really was consoling and comforting to me during college, which was Swans, Current 93, the legendary Pink Dots, those were all my favorite bands. But I also loved Mahler's Fifth and the Beethoven Piano Sonatas and was just as likely to stick those on my Walkman as I was the soundtrack to Evita. <laughs> took an experimental music course and I got a full education in Philip Glass and Robert Wilson and Laurie Anderson and Morton Feldman and the New York School and I learned about performance art. College, if, if it gave me nothing else, definitely gave me an entree into where to look. Then I left college and I started a band. I stopped listening to music altogether. <laughs> started making it instead. Yeah.